Pocket.com, and I'm here with the August edition of 4x6 Photo Love. Since it's the eighth month of the year, that means we're going to scrapbook eight 4x6 photos. And this month, there are lots of different ways you can do that with either portrait or landscape photos, and you can mix them up however you would like. This month's design concept is kind of a page and a half. So it looks like a single 12x12 layout, but we're going to sew two page protectors together to create this extra place that um, opens up this extra page and then you can add additional photos on all that extra space. So in this particular example I've got four 4x6 four landscape shots here and two more landscape there and two portraits on the front. And then in the layout that I'm going to walk you through I use four portraits and four landscapes. And then we have a special guest this month who's done all, uh, all portrait shots. So whatever your photo combination might be, there'll be a way to work it with eight photos on this page and a half design. And you will need two page protectors so that you can put them together and be able to create the one page that opens. So this particular layout is in yellow and gray and I use mostly the Amy Tangerine line for American Crafts. And then the layout that I'm going to walk you through has a bit broader color spectrum. There's still quite a lot of yellow, but it's going to be on craft cardstock and then yellow with some shades of blue. And I'm using mostly the um, Sunshine Broadcast collection from, uh, from Sassafras. And that includes this lovely uh, sunset sky and some yellow and blue florals as well. I've also pulled out the Foldies flowers from that collection and the two sticker sheets, banners, and then the larger um, journaling stickers as well. Um, plus one sheet from the Amy Tangerine collection, which has these blue circles on one side, but it also has this great uh, map strip at the bottom here in green. So I may use just that little bit, or I may throw in a bit more color here, just depends on how it works out. And also the stamp collection from Amy Tangerine. So I've got my photos right here. I've got eight four by six prints, so if you want to grab eight four by six photos, you can scrap right along with me for the August edition of four by six photo love. Okay, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is cut the smaller page to size. And I just wanted to show you with the page protector, although we're going to sew all the way across, so really the size can be any size and it can be any placement on the page. I find that pages like this are the most stable if you can keep two of the holes on the page protector. So it doesn't need to go all the way up to the third hole, but if you can keep two, then that just gives um, a little bit more stability to the layout. If it needs to be smaller, that's okay. Okay, you can do just a smaller strip at the bottom and um, just keep in mind that if you can use both it, you can add a little bit more weight to the page without it um, bending or, or falling below. So I'm going to um, cut my piece the same size as this so I've cut about four inches off the top of the 12 by 12 sheet which gives me this little 8 inch by 12 inch piece here. Then the next thing I need to do is I don't want what shows here to be awkward. So it should line up so that it works well so that when you open it then you see what's here. If this was a couple inches below then you would see just kind of the tops of our heads or the tops of the photos which is a bit more awkward. So to make it nice and polished I try to use this piece to line up where I want these photos to go. So I look at the bottom edge of the cardstock once I've cut this piece and I line that top photo up with the edge here so I know that once this is closed those photos will be covered up and it won't be some awkward bit of sky showing like this. It will fit just perfect and cover up everything that, um, that I don't want them to see straight away. So now I have this space, this space, and this space to work with. And if you would like, you can double this up. I'll double this up on two pieces of cardstock that's exactly the same front and back just to have the, the stability of two pages there. And also the flexibility in case something goes wrong. It's nice to not have, have to work on both sides of the page in case something just doesn't quite work out. You haven't ruined what you've already done. So I've used four landscape photos on the 12 by 12 sheet. And then I'm going to use four portrait photos and I'm going to um, include two on the front section 
and then two on the back of that same panel. Since I'm using two portraits on each of these, uh, each side of the smaller piece, I just decided it would be easier to make the designs quite similar. So I chose two pattern papers uh, that are very similar. They're both a similar floral, but just in the opposite color scheme. And cut a seven by 12 pattern paper block and then added the two photos at a slight angle with a little bit of overlap. This particular photo was a little bit too close in color to the background with the the bit of the sea here was very similar to this kind of dark greeny turquoise. So I added a yellow mat in this um, floral here just to give that a little bit of border to set it off. Um, but this is the basic design that I'm going to start with for both of those pieces and then I'm going to add further embellishment to that. This sheet is going to be the front of the layout and I'm starting with that yellow pattern paper. I'm going to add one of the larger journaling stickers from the same collection. And then I'm going to add the Foldies flowers. These are one of my favorite things to use as embellishments and what you do is punch out a whole set and then they fold up to create this layered die cut with dimension and it looks like you took all these pieces and mixed and matched until you got it just perfect but really it's all done for you so nice and easy. So I punch the whole piece out like that and I just I find it's easiest if you want to ink the edges to do it at this point rather than when it's put together when it's folded up so I just ink everything to start. And then you just follow the directions with the arrows and fold the pieces so that you get everything all layered. And that creates this great big embellishment that would go all the way across there. Now that's a little bit much for what I want so I'm going to keep part of it here and I'm going to add the other section up here. So I'm just going to cut this fold away and that means I'll just tidy up this edge so this piece will sit at this side of the layout and this piece I'll just glue to the back and this piece will sit up here or perhaps go in another place on the layout. And maybe I'll use that one on the, the back of this page. I also want to add some border here where the, where the paper ends. And I have the border sticker sheet from that same collection. So I'm just looking for something with a straight edge that would go in line with the pattern here. So I'm going to start with this one. And I'm just going to run that at the top of the pattern paper. And then if there's something for the bottom, I think what I'm going to do here, yeah, this one, I don't know if you can see, is circles. But what I'm going to do is cut the sticker sheet right down the middle so that I can use half here with semicircles and half on the, the other page. I'm just going to stick the whole sheet in my trimmer and cut right through it. So now I have two sheets. Um, so I'm just going to take this piece and run it at the bottom of the page here. And that means I can use that matching piece on this side. So 
So if you want to mix and match patterns, being able to find something that will be the same as well as something that's different can make that work. So find, having two border strips that match and then the pattern being similar but not quite perfect. And we'll repeat that up here as well. So you can see these two are starting to have some similarities. And then I'm also looking for something that's similar to this to go at the top here. And I think these yellow flags are probably my best bet. Um, when I use the foldies, if there's a piece that ends up on top like this where um, both of these pieces are folding under, then I use foam adhesive on this piece that is going to have more, uh, that's going to be more dimensional, and I glue these two flat to the page. So my trick here is I want to connect all these pieces so that it's touching the background, the border, the pattern paper, the sticker, and the photo, but I don't want to obscure too much of the photo so that you lose um, the idea of the picture. So I'm just covering that, that bottom corner, which is um, in soft focus anyway. So this will give me a place for some journaling, which I'll add in a little bit, and I'll probably also splash some... Um, some paint or ink on top of this to pull that together, but I'll wait just a minute until I've got everything ready to go. And I'm going to repeat that same design here with another journaling sticker and the flower. I'm using this camera stamp with a little heart in the lens from the Amy Tangerine set, and this is something that I've been using on quite a few pages recently. Um, you may have seen a video I did here at Two Piece the other day where I stamped it in black and then filled it in with brown glimmer mist. And today I'm going to stamp it in brown because I don't want it to be quite so bold. So I've just stamped three so that I'll have one for each page. I can always come back and stamp some more or um, not use all of them if I decide not to. But I'm just going to cut those out with my scissors into kind of a rough rounded rectangle shape so that it's similar shape to the camera. So I've added the camera stamps into the little cluster of flowers. In this case where the flowers were on pop dots, I've, gl I've glued the camera down flat. And in this case where the flowers were flat, I put the camera on pop dots and layered it over the top. On each of the cameras, just to make... Um, to bring a little bit of color into the the brown on brown stamping. I've just colored in the heart with a pink marker and then gone around the heart shape with a brown fine tip pen. So you could do that with any color to make it match um, what you've chosen on the layout. And I just wanted to bring in a little bit of the pink from those groups of flowers. With the front and back of the front section, this the shorter page section completed, then you want to line this up and then there's this space here at the top. Now I've added um, pattern paper, which was the back of one of the floral sheets here, to the top. And this is going to be space for my title. And when I'm adding the title, I just want to keep this this part of the page on top so that I can see how it flows and that will show me the color that I need to bring in and, and the balance because this is how the page will be viewed and then um, when it's open there's a different balance here so I want to make sure that I add the title with this part of the page in place. I want to bring in more of this turquoise color. So there are two different options available from Sassafras that um, are quite recent releases and match with that. One is a more aqua and that's called Blue Graph. And this is a darker one and it's called Slate. But it is, um, it's definitely a turquoise, not like a gray charcoal-y type slate. So um, either of those will pull in that color and I'm gonna add my title here in this box.
With the title done, and I can see that I'm happy with the balance of the color and everything here, then I'm going to take these two aside for a minute. I can just leave this one here. And I want to finish the embellishment here to make it correspond with the page here. I want to bring that yellow pattern paper back in from the first page because aside from here, I haven't used it on this page at all. And this is the very bottom of that sheet. It's actually where the sassafras papers and um, how they have this strip here for the barcode. I just um, took the very edge of the pattern paper and the very edge of this. So I've still got a little bit left of this piece, but you can see how where these would have been the same size even though they're different pattern papers. So I've taken about a quarter inch below the of the barco barcode and and a quarter inch of the pattern paper itself. If that makes sense, I hope so. <laughs> so this is the very bottom of that strip and I'm just going to add it straight to the bottom of the layout. And I want to bring in something to make this match. So I've gone back to the foldy sheet and brought in another foldy flower. But um, you may notice here, there's not a lot of space left for embellishment. What I wanted to do is there's a shadow here that is not anyone I know. This is just a random person that um, happened to walk by and I didn't catch that I was getting a shadow in the picture. And I like this part of the photo. I think the color is really nice and it's a different angle of the boats, but the shadow does ruin it a bit. So if I cover up the shadow with the foldies here, um, at first I thought maybe that's not a good idea because then I'm covering up so much of the white sand on the beach. But this shot is very similar and it shows the white sand on the beach. So I don't feel like I'm losing any meaning by covering up the shadow and kind of correcting my mistake in the photo. So that's where I'm going to add the flower, but that does mean that the foldy is going to go off the edge of the page and I'm just going to cut off the extra. I also have one more little camera left to go in this grouping. so. I'm going to tuck that into the flowers there. And I want to, to um, bring in something else to match. Like on the other pages, I always use the journaling sticker with the camera and the foldy flower. So I had a look at the journaling stickers, but there's nothing really that would work with this gap. And the other thing I haven't brought back into this page is this turquoise pattern paper. So what I'm going to do is use um, just a little bit of this and I'm going to punch it with a label punch so that I can just tuck it in behind the camera here and have just a little bit to connect the those two pages uh, without having to having to have something really big and bulky there. So I'm just going to um, punch this, but if you don't have a label punch, you could just cut a rectangle or anything like that. Okay, so the label is going to go underneath. and then the camera, and then the flower. Oh, actually the flower is going to go first. And then I'm just gonna tuck the camera in here. And where these are too big for the page, I'll just turn it over and trim off the extra. Sometimes if you trim off extra of the foldies, there's a good place for them to tuck back in if you want to add more. So in this case, it's not going to be helpful, but just so that you can see, you could add more um, just to, to continue it in another direction if it's not quite going where you want it to go. And then where I've cut off the extra, it's handy to go back and add a little bit of ink to make it look like it was meant to be that way. And now I have the majority of the layout done. Um, a few more steps I need to do. I need to add my journaling and I have space here, here, and here. And then I need to um, make the page protector to fit. And I'm also going to splatter a little bit of ink over um, the embellishment 
sections just to bring that all together because there's also kind of a ink splatter design in the pattern paper that I've used. So I'll do that ink splattering first and for this I'm going to use two shades from October Afternoon Sprinklers. So this is Buttermilk and Brown Bag. And what I'm going to do is just I cover up the photo while I'm doing this so I don't get the paint on the picture. And rather than spraying, I just shake them up and then use the um, the sprayer to sprinkle the color on. And for big dots, you can just touch it. I like these two as a set because um, they're very similar shade, but one is darker than the other. So they do seem to go quite well um, together and they work really well with craft cardstock and I use a lot of that. So if you're a craft fan, then you might want to get that set that has these two. It's a set that has four different colors. It also comes with a white and a gray. So I'm just going to repeat that on all the segments of embellishment. Once all the pages are ready, it's time to put them in page protectors and it is worth figuring out which um, way you want the page to go if you want this, um, which side the hole should be on the page protector to make sure it goes in the right place in your album. Um, so mine's going to go on this side and then you just line everything up so that both pages are in a full page protector and then take your trimmer or your scissors and cut off the extra right along the top of the um, the shorter page so you don't have all this extra clear page protector left at the top. So I've cut off the extra and I just have this extra piece that I've removed and then I can line it back up and then I just want to take this to the sewing machine and run a straight stitch here that will just connect these two page protectors and keep these two pages together when they're opened in the album. If you do a lot of um, two pages or just a few two page, two page layouts in a ring binder and you want to be able to keep that center joined together, sewing the page protectors is a really quick and easy way to do that because it, that way the, the center of the layout will always be together in your album even if it's on a ring binder rather than in a post bound album. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can still use this technique. You can either stitch this by hand, you can use staples, you can use double-sided tape to just tape the two page protectors together. But essentially what you want to do is take this, um, this side of the page protector and make sure the holes are lined up and then attach these two pieces so that this layout all stays together. So here it is all stitched together and usually I would probably use a more subtle color of thread but I wanted to make sure that you would be able to see on the page protector where it's sewn together. And all I do then with the extra thread is just trim it right um, to the end of the last stitch so that I don't have the loose pieces. On layouts I quite often leave loose pieces but on the page protector they can get caught and then start to unravel if if the um, thread pulls out of the album or anything like that. So I find it easier just to, to cut them short. And then that's this month's layout done. So I have um, my two, four, six, eight, four by six photos all on one layout um, with a different technique for this month. So it's your turn now and the challenge for you is to put eight four by six photos on a layout using this month's design concept which is to add this extra page. If you use a different kind of page protector or anything like that just feel free to get creative and find a way that it will work for you to add an extra partial page to your layout. You can use any design, you can use any um, uh, orientation if you want all landscape, all portrait, or a mix. You can use any embellishments and I um, encourage you to just play with the idea and try and find something that you really like. If you upload it to the gallery and check the box for um, for the 4x6 photo love challenge by the 29th of the month, then you're in the running for a prize from Two Peas in a Bucket. So we would love to have your layout in the gallery and I hope you enjoy the uh, August edition of 4x6 photo love. Thank Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you next month.